three, two, one, action. Jeez, let's go. This is the main reason why we went to Venice, the 2024 Art Biennale. The Biennale is basically the Olympics, but for art, where every country has an artist represent them, and this artist then creates an artwork inspired by the theme of that year. This year's theme was foreigners everywhere. Now, there are numerous ways of interpreting the theme. Some artists chose to talk about immigration, colonization, a person's cultural identity as an immigrant or a second generation immigrant. Then there was lots of representation for the LGBTQ plus community and how they're seen as foreigners. Some artists chose to see the human race as the foreigners in the natural world. One aspect that I never really considered was consumerism, logomania, which is very fascinating because, again, growing up in Asia, seeing all these Western brands come in and like taking over. Like, imagine being in Hong Kong in olden days and Coca Cola suddenly becomes a thing and you're like seeing this brand everywhere or seeing like luxury brands pop up everywhere. Very interesting. But what really took my breath away was Japan. Now, Japan's artist Yuko Mori. She basically took everyday objects, very mundane objects from flea markets and furniture shops in Venice, and then created these kinetic sculptures and these contraptions where she would feed water through a tube onto, say, an upturned umbrella where it collects the water. And then there's like a little hole and the hole kind of goes through and the water goes through. And then the drip drops onto like a surface to create a sound. You know those like scientific experiments that you used to do in school where you'd convert like moisture into electricity? She basically did that where she would like feed these tubes into these vegetables that she got from local vendors in Venice. And then the water and the moisture is then fed into antique electronics and record players to then create music. That was just such an interesting way to interpret the theme. And that honestly was just blowing my mind because it really goes hand in hand with that Japanese ethos of finding beauty in everyday objects and breathing new life and repurposing old things like kintsugi or wabi sabi. But the way the artist explained it was she wanted this artwork to show what it meant for people to work together in a world challenged by division and conflicts and global crises. Mori was inspired by Tokyo subway workers fixing or trying to fix water leaks and how they would find interesting contraptions to do them. And I just found that one so Japanese. I was legit like, that is legit Japan to a T. But honestly, the coolest thing was seeing how Mori was inspired by the theme and how she interpreted the theme, how it wasn't very much at face value, because there were certainly some countries that did it very on feet. Like Australia, who actually won the Biennale this year, the artist basically went through generations and hundreds of years of records of aboriginals in Australia and then converted the whole room, their whole pavilion, into a giant blackboard and then wrote down each name to create a giant family tree. I didn't get any footage of it because it was too dark, but that was, again, a sight to behold. But that was very face value, very on theme and amazing. But seeing how Mori interpreted this theme in a non-linear traditional way, that was what sold me. And I think that's why I would encourage any artist, any creative photographer, illustrator, artist to go to the Biennale or go to these art shows because it challenges the way you think, it challenges the way you see, 
it makes you see and interpret in ways that I never would have thought of before. I was trying to think me, myself, how would I interpret the theme? How would I create an artwork? And I was honestly stumped. I felt it was such a difficult idea and theme to create an artwork that would be unique. And that's an issue I felt a lot of artists in this year's Biennale faced because there was a lot of same, same, but kind of different. But again, that's why it was such a blast because as a creative, I'm always constantly trying to find new ways of telling a story, new ways of sharing emotion. And it's just such an interesting way to see all these different countries, nationalities and cultures interpreting the theme in their own way, injecting their own kind of nation's pride and their own nation's way of seeing it. That was such an awesome experience that you kind of have to go and see for yourself. And it does make me grow as an artist. It does make me try and inject more intention. It does try and make me, you know, think and see differently. And that is why, again, I cannot recommend you enough to check out the Biennale if you are an artist. So head over to Venice. And of course, other than the Biennale, Venice is beautiful. So why the hell not? But yeah, head over to Venice. It's on till November. But enough of Venice, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go back in time. We're going to go to LA where I'm going to do a shoot with the amazing Kylie. We're going to do a really fun concept. So without further ado, let's cut to the studio. What's good, guys? We're in 503 DTLA Studios in downtown. It's looking like a beautiful day outside. It's kind of a shame that we're indoors. But then I guess it's always beautiful in LA, so it's less of a shame because in London, when there's like a good day, everyone's out and about. So okay, I guess it's not that bad, but we have a very exciting day today. I'm gonna be shooting with Kylie. She's fucking insane. We're doing a really cool anime concept. Did a concept sketch on the plane to LA. Then I'm gonna shoot with Carrie, Sophie, Halo, Halo's sister. So that's five models all in one day. We're gonna maximize our time here in LA, maximize our time in the studio, this amazing studio run by Danny. Big up to him, big shout out to him, to 503 BTLA for letting me shoot here. But yeah, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's just cut to it. Boom. Love. Love. E. Sit. Guess the model I went on, but that's fine. Boom. Lovely. Yeah, give me some of that energy. Love, love. What the fuck you looking at, got a vibe? Yes. You talking to me? You talking to me? I think it's time to jump. Let's do the jump. Let's do the jump. Good luck. I know. Oh. I'm like, I gotta get one more good look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so let, wait. So this hand pointing at camera. This hand pointing yep. at camera. Yeah. And then up. this hand up. And then you're fucking jump with the legs like behind. This. Okay. And then whilst looking good. I Say less. <laughs> you got this. All right. Okay. Do a test. Oh, yeah. It could work. It could work. Ooh, that was good. That was good. Just let me know. What did you try? See, that was actually pretty good. All right. And three, two, one, action. Okay, okay. Ooh! Hey yo, shit! Hey yo! <laughs> okay, hey yo, okay. One thing I learned from my dad is height does not determine how high you can jump. He's 5'4, that man can dump. She's five spewing four, facts, baby. Dump. Okay. Three, two, one, action! Okay, okay. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh, yo, that's fucking sick! Bye. Dude, oh I think we fucking, I think we crushed that shit. But so you too. crushed it. No, you crushed we it. Absolutely fucking only. Oh my god. Okay, okay, cool. We got the jumping. I'm Boom. So Dude, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be lit. Cheese. Let's go. And that's a wrap, Queen. Bang. Honestly, words cannot describe how much fun I had with Kylie. She's such an amazing human being and an amazing model. Be sure to check out her work, Shark Bay, on Instagram. She is cool as hell. Now, on to the motorcycle. Now, originally when I had done the sketch for the concept on my way to LA, I had already known that we would be adding the motorcycle in post because, duh, 
I probably could have gotten the real motorcycle if I had a little bit more time and budget, but since the shoot was going to be in two days, I already knew that I had to do it in post. Now, my plan was to hire a 3D modeler off of Fiverr and basically have them do all of the work. I would send them a photo of the shoot, have them match the lighting, and then just do all the renders and textures and just have them send me a rendered photo of the motorcycle and I just add Kylie in. But then I figured, where is the fun in that? Now, obviously, I could have taught myself how to do all of this and 3D model it, but I don't have the patience for that or the skill set for that. So instead, I went for the other kind of modeling, the plastic modeling, ladies and gentlemen. So I went to Tamiya. I ordered the Yamaha Vivago XV1000. I know nothing about motorcycles. I just thought it looked cool and it has a badass name. Now, the model build itself was frankly a breeze, and that's because Tamiya are the goats of making these plastic model kits. They're always easy to follow, easy to assemble, and it was frankly a blast. This was my first ever motorcycle kit. It took me about a day and a half to finish the assembly. And then the painting process was also very simple because a lot of the kit was already chrome plated. So all I had to do was airbrush the color scheme for the chassis. I went for blue and then I just basically wetted the motorcycle using enamel washes, oil washes, weather it to make it look legit and lived in. Now I did try to do some detailing and the custom paint job. But after a couple failed attempts, I decided to just do it in Photoshop where I'm 10 times more confident in my abilities. So I did that, composited in some elements, added some extra bits here and there like the shark, cause obviously Shark Bay, bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kylie Shark Bay, the legend that she is in Joyride. And that pretty much sums up today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I've been your boy, Seb. I'll see you all next time. Peace.